um, yesterday, God gave me a vision. And I went to Evangelist Francine and I said, can you wear sneakers tomorrow? And she wore her sneakers. And I said to Bishop, I said, I don't know what God wants to do, but there's a word in my spirit and I know that the sneakers is part of the preparation. And I want to just talk to you prophetically about what the Lord is saying because God is telling you even when you don't understand that he's going to give you instructions to prepare you for what's ahead. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all need to listen real close. And God is saying to the people of God, you don't know what tomorrow holds. But Jesus knows. Hallelujah. And God is saying unto us that I'm going to speak into your spirit and I'm going to prepare you for what you don't see yet. And it's going to take the people of God to be obedient to the instructions even when they don't understand. When God told me to ask her to wear her sneakers today, my God, I began to see different things, and I don't know how God wants to do it, but I know we just need the space. Hallelujah. And even though she did not understand, because I gave her no explanation of why she needed to wear sneakers, but her answer was yes. And there's a season that you need to trust the anointing of your leadership. And her answer was yes. So she came prepared on today to be blessed, not knowing why God wanted her to be in this type of position, but ready. Hallelujah. Many of us may have struggled to wear sneakers on a Sunday morning. Oh my God. And God is doing in this season some strange things to test our obedience. I'm just excited. I feel like running, but I'm going to try not to. Hallelujah. Because she's going to do the moves for me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, in the word of the Lord, I want you to turn with, with us to Jeremiah 29 and 11. And someone please bring her a chair because we're going to be up and down today and I want her to sit right here. Hallelujah. My God, let me tell you today how good God is. Try to hold my peace. But I'm often set up with the word of God. Hallelujah. My God. Our soul has said it's not over until what? And the word that the Lord had birthed in me was that there's going to be distractions and obstacles on the way to your destiny. But it's not over. Until God says that is over. Begin to think about this word destiny. Let's think about this for a moment. Destiny as you're getting the word of God. Destiny. Destiny is a predetermined course of events to get you to where God wants you to be. Oh, my God. And there's things that we're not going to understand, but there is something about destiny that will get you to where God wants you to be if you are obedient and follow the course that he has for you. Looked up this word obstacle. What are obstacles? And, and the dictionary said that they are things that impede your progress. Impede, slow you down. They are things that keep getting in your way. Because, But how many of you know that the enemy is supposed to put obstacles in your way? On the way to your destiny. But look at your neighbor and say, but I'm on my way anyhow. I'm on my way anyhow. Oh, my God, my God. Look at him again and say it like a minute, but I'm on my way in. Has anybody ever had an obstacle that just, you know, that, that you thought that you got over and, and every time you think you got over it, 
then something else keeps coming in a familiar way. Anybody ever keep having these obstacles? But you're still here. You're still in the land of the living. You're, you're still you're still holding on to your faith. So regardless of the obstacles and every distraction, God say, I'm using those things, but I still have destiny for you. It ain't over. Until God says, that is over. My, 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 I got a plan, the Lord says. For the Bible tells us in Jeremiah 29 and 11, in very familiar scripture, Jesus says, For I know the thoughts that I think. Oh, I'm just excited towards you. Wait a minute, don't even go further for a moment. I know what I think about you. I know the plans that I have for you. I got plans of prosperity. The enemy would have us to think something totally different. But it don't matter what you think about yourself in this season. It's what God said I think of you. Fearfully, wonderfully. God said I know the thoughts. Your mind is not like God's minds. His ways are not like your ways. The enemy is trying to get us to think something else. Oh, he's trying to get you to focus on what you see with your natural eye. And keep in mind that some of us wear glasses so you don't see clearly anyhow. That's right. That's right. Uh-huh. And he distorts us from the way we're seeing things. He distorts it. He wants us to, to look at things one way. And God said, but I know. I'm just so excited. God said, I know the thoughts that I have towards who? Towards you. Look at God. Say it the Lord. Thoughts of peace. Somebody declare peace. Peace. God said, I have thoughts of peace and not of evil. I want to give you a peace that passes all. <laughs> and it just woke up full of joy. And there are storms going on in your life and you can't even explain yourself. Why am I so happy right now? <laughs> There's a season in your life that there's a peace that's going to be released in the midst of your storm. Not when he bring you out, but right there in the midst of foolishness. Yes. Uh, in the furnace of your affliction, he's going to give you some type of peace and joy that you can't even understand. And the enemy's going to say, why do you have joy? Shouldn't you be crying? And yes, I may cry, but these are tears of joy. You suck it for Lord. And as long as I know that God's got some thoughts that are good, He said, I got some good things in store for you. Thoughts of peace and not evil. The devil wants to kill you. Want to just I read something uh, not too long ago that they said somebody is prophesying that year 2011 that the world was supposed to end. The devil is a liar. Sure enough. Because it's against the word of God. The word of God said no man know the day nor the hour when the son of man shall come. Listen here. Nobody can prophesy the end but God. They're trying to tell people that 2011 is it. I don't care if it's 2011 because the world is not my home. So I, I really, really, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even sad if it was 2011. If it's 2011 or 2012 or 2013, I'm just going to stay in a ready position. Look at them and say, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. Because I know the plans that God has for me. And he already told me Just crazy enough to believe the word of God. That's right. <laughs> I'm just crazy enough to stand on his promises. Yeah. I'm just crazy enough to believe everything that he tells me because I got an ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Even when it don't look like it, I just believe what God says. Yes. Yes. It ain't over. Yes. 
until God says that it's over. God said, I got destiny for you. I got a plan that you don't even know about. I got some thoughts. They're thoughts of peace and prosperity and not of evil. And some people say, but I messed up. And Jesus says, but I picked you up. But I, but I picked you up. I met you right in a state that you was in. And then I picked you up and I planted your feet on a solid rock. And I made you like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Oh, yes, I did because of who I am. And because I love you so, I got some thoughts and a plan for your life. Jesus says, look, I know the thoughts that I have towards you. Somebody read the rest of that, please. Read loud. For I know the thoughts that uh, I think towards you, yes. saith the Lord. Yes. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, uh -huh. to give an un to give an expected end. That's what, that's what I mean. Expected. Expected. Your expected end is victory. Yes. Your expected end is prosperity. When you get this word of God into your spirit to come to realize that as long as I'm in the Lord's hand, there's an expected end for my life. It doesn't look like it, but it doesn't matter what it looks like. He's preparing me for what I got to go through. I need that tissue box right there. Yes. This is what the Lord is saying. Hallelujah. I need that snare drum right there. Hallelujah. You know God is a good God? Mm. And isn't he so worthy to be praised? Hallelujah. Somebody said hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the drum part. Just the snare itself. Hallelujah. And just put it right there on the floor. Yes, yes. Glory to God. Ah. Evangelist Ward, stand for a moment. Part of our preparation is first being obedient to what God says. The Lord told her through his servant to wear sneakers today. Because God's got an expected end for your life. It's the Lord. God already knows everything that's going to try to get in your way. I'll tell you. God says, look at that first obstacle. You're on your way to destiny. And I know the plans I have for you. But there's some stuff that keeps trying to slow you. There's some stuff that keeps trying to get in your way. But the Lord said, but I will give you instructions to get you to the expected. So what God told me to tell you is that first obstacle, he told me to tell you to kick it. Kick it. Kick it. Kick it. Kick it. Kick it. That's right. That's it. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Move it out of your way. That's right. That's right. Listen to God, listen to God, listen to God. Every obstacle. God said, because I love you just like that. Every round is going to seem more intense than the other. But if you listen to me, because as you're moving into destiny, the enemy is going to put stronger obstacles and bigger obstacles in your way. But it don't matter how big it gets. My God is bigger than every obstacle. The Lord say, walk up to your obstacle. Walk up to your Now hear the Lord say, step over it. Step over it. 